Hi guys, my name is Monica and welcome to this 10 minute tea chat where we are going to be reviewing, tasting, and discussing a pairing with one of the teas from my collection. So I am super excited to discuss this tea today. It is a Jinjun Mei, which is a Chinese black tea. It is absolutely one of my favorites in my collection and it's my favorite for fall for a very specific reason. I think that fall often brings a lot of fun spices and sweet flavored treats and I think this tea pairs really well with all of those things. And so I guess it's my alternative to maybe like what some people would really enjoy would be a chai but this is my alternative and this is one of the teas that I like constantly fall back to. Anyway so we're gonna try it today. I'll show you how I brew it in two different ways and then we'll enjoy it together and maybe discuss some of the pairing options. Okay, so let's get started. So I actually discovered this tea when I was traveling in LA. I went to this um, like wellness spot it's called Ben Mother. I think it's in the Venice Beach area, but I'm not too good with my LA geography. Anyway, so this um, spa had paired with one of the tea companies in the area. It's actually run by this guy and he curates the entire tea selection himself. And it was something that was available to buy in the spa and I ended up buying it and absolutely loving it. And I've just been purchasing purchasing it online from his company since, and so I thought it was a really perfect tea to start off this tea series with. So when you buy the tea from the collection, um, they come in bags, they're about this size. I actually have two of them. I have one here, and this bag is almost done, and so I did buy a second one, which looks like it's a little bit larger. Um, and it comes with steeping instructions on the front, recommendation for the amount of tea that you should put in for each serving, and then also water temperature and the amount of water you should use. There's some information about steeping time and then just like caffeine levels and theanine levels, which um, maybe matter a little bit when you're drinking tea, but to me, I'm not really paying attention to those as much. Um, this tea is a bud tea. So what that means is when the tea plant grows, it grows kind of like if you imagine a stalk with these leaves growing off of it. And at the very tip of that stalk is the bud and it's kind of like the newest leaf of the tea plant. And that means it's also each kind of um, stalk of the tea plant only has one bud. And so you can imagine in order to get like a kilogram or like 500 grams or 200 grams of tea, you have to harvest a lot of the tea plants in order to just kind of collect these buds. Um, so what that does is I'm going to show you, it gives it a really interesting texture and a really interesting um, appearance compared to maybe some other teas that you've seen. So whenever I brew tea, I typically measure about two to three grams to brew. This little serving spoon isn't super specific. I actually usually just use the palm of my hand. So I take what about um, the amount of tea that might fit in just like the center part of the palm of my hand. But the reason I wanted to put it on here was to show you guys a little bit closely kind of what these buds look like. So they're rolled um, and they're very fine and they're a little bit fuzzy. And that speaks a lot to how they're produced. So the way that this tea is produced is that it's grown in the, um, it's the Wuyi Mountains in the Fujian province of China, and that's very specific to this tea. What they do is they take those little buds from the tea plant and they actually harvest them. And then in order to get them to oxidize, this is a black tea, so it's gonna be fully oxidized, they roll the buds. And the buds are rolled by hand instead of like another way to get tea to oxidize would be to chop the leaves up. And that would expose the um, kind of the interior part of the leaf to more oxygen. You can think about it like if you were to cut into an apple and then leave the apple to brown on the counter. Anyway, so we'll put that in the teapot here. Um, so once the leaves are oxidized, what happens, they've been rolled, they've been oxidized, they're allowed to fully oxidize or turn fully brown, which is actually what gives this tea its color. Um, and something that I didn't show you, but maybe I can do that right now with some of the extra little things that come in the bag, are that it gives it this really unique golden color. Um, so you can see that the leaves themselves have a very golden color and it means they're very pretty and actually the ginger and may translates to either a golden steed eyebrow or a golden beautiful eyebrow and it's because those little fine leaves look like little eyebrows. Anyway, so once the leaves have been fully oxidized, they're actually roasted and that gives them a really unique flavor and I'll talk about that as we brew it. So give me one second to just go get the hot water and then we'll add some to our pot. Okay. And we're back with some hot water. This hot water is at 90 degrees Celsius. And what I do is I just gently pour it over the tea leaves. I actually typically heat my water 
to just slightly above 90 degrees Celsius, and I think that comes out to like 195 degrees Fahrenheit, if I'm doing my math correctly, because when you pour the water from the pot into the teapot itself, you actually um, lose a couple degrees of heat depending on the height that you're pouring from. So I always make my water a little bit hotter when I actually boil it in the pot. I let this tea steep for about three minutes. Um, and then while it's steeping, I always like to take like a little bit of a whiff and a little smell because this tea has a really unique taste for a black tea. Um, I think often people think of black teas as being very bitter and astringent and because this tea has been roasted it actually gives it a really interesting kind of sweet honey quality and then there's something about this tea and I don't know what it is but um, it actually has a little bit of a soy aftertaste which I love because that's like a savory element for the tea and this is one of the reasons why I think this tea is so perfect for fall is that so many of the fall treats revolve around like these really fun spices and these really sweet flavors and it's awesome, I think, that there is almost this like savory, like miso flavor to this tea that I think complements those sweet treats really, really well. Um, sometimes I feel like chai for fall can be a little bit overwhelming with all the spices. Um, and so I think that this is like a really great alternative and it's something for me that really like works without milk. I can drink it in the evening. The caffeine doesn't really bother me too much. Um, and I honestly think that it's really an amazing black tea because it's constantly a tea that I serve to people who tell me, oh, I don't like tea, and I'm like, no, you have to try this tea. And they try it, and they're like, wow, like this actually surprises me that this doesn't have any of the characteristics of tea that I usually dislike. So I think it's a really good, like high-quality tea, but works for such an introductory level, which I think is a lot of fun. Anyway, so as I let it steep, what I'm paying attention to is not really the color, but I always just like to watch those leaves unfurl. If you remember when I was talking about the oxidation process, what happens is they actually have to hand roll those buds. Um, and so when you start to um, engage those buds with the hot water, they actually just start to open up a little bit and then you get more of that leaf shape, which is really interesting. So I give it about three minutes or so. Um, what's amazing about this tea, and we won't have time, I guess, maybe during this video to go through multiple steeps, but if you steep your tea appropriately for like three minutes, then you actually should be able to steep it multiple times. So I think that I can really, if I'm steeping it Western style, which is kind of what I'm doing here for these like longer three minute steeps, I feel like I can truly get a good three steeps out of this tea, which is awesome. Um, then if I'm doing it Gang Fucha style, which is more the Eastern style of brewing tea, using this little guy here, which is you kind of pack the same amount of tea leaves, so two to three grams of tea leaves in here, but then you're using significantly less water. And then you're taking this and after about a minute or so, you would take it and you would actually just like pour it into your cup like so. We can do a little bit of that too. Um, and I think when you're doing that method, I've been able to get like six or seven brews out of this tea. So you're really getting a lot of um, a lot of brews, I guess, for kind of the amount of tea that you have, two to three grams. So I think it's been about three minutes or so. And typically what I do to strain this tea is I really have like a massive teapot and then I have one of these little tea strainers and maybe I can put a link to one of these in the comments below or something like that that I like. But this way I can use any type of vessel that I want. I put the tea strainer over it and then I literally just pour the tea in and this is gonna strain out all the leaves. Um, I think it's a really nice way to steep tea because when you end up actually putting the leaves themselves in a strainer, wow, I almost got it perfectly. I'm gonna overflow a little bit. Let me take a sip. Um, <laughs> look at that, I filled the cup so much. But if you were to confine the leaves to a strainer in the pot, it actually restricts the amount of um, surface area of leaf that's touching the water. And then you end up oversteeping the leaves on the outside and understeeping the leaves on the inside. And oftentimes that's where you get the bitter flavor of tea. So let me take a quick sip here. It's really good. Definitely getting that like honeyed taste at the beginning followed by those soy after notes. The other thing I really like about this tea compared to other black teas is that when you're steeping it at about 90 degrees Celsius, it means that by the time that the tea is sat in the pot and then gets to your cup, it's had a chance to cool off a little bit. And so it really makes it like the perfect hot sipping temperature where you're not gonna burn your tongue, but you're also gonna be able to like enjoy a hot beverage in the fall, which I think is great. So I do absolutely really love this. Okay, 
Um, one more thing before we maybe discuss some other pairings um, is I wanted to just quickly show you how I do the Gong Fucha style of steeping. So I'm gonna take some more of these leaves um, and I'll show you in my hand how I measure them out. Just like this. So I actually need a little bit more here. But you can see how when I kind of just like put these leaves in the palm of my hand, they actually just fill that center circle of your palm really perfectly. And this actually measures out to about two to three grams. So what I do is I just put these into the Gung um, Fucha style brewing set. Um, and they're gonna sit at the bottom there. I take my same temperature hot water. And again, I'm just pouring it gently over the leaves. Don't wanna overflow here but you definitely can pretty easily. It's not that much water. I'll get this teapot out of the way. Um, then you cover and you let it go for about a minute. And like I said, you're only waiting a minute here because you're actually trying to extract the different tea flavors at different points in time. If you think about it, like I did for the first Western style brew, what I did was I, um, I'm only tasting how the tea is at that three minute steeping point. It's really like you wouldn't get an idea of how the tea tastes at 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, etc. So now what I do is I take my little vessel here, I pick it up, and then I actually am straining the leaves with the lid as I pour it into the cup, like so. I'm not like particularly skilled at this technique, I would say. I mean, I know how to do it, but it's not like a technique that I'm typically using pretty often. Some people are really amazing at brewing with this set um, and they can do all these like really fun fancy pours. That's not me yet. And I obviously don't have the right size cup. I would like to do a smaller cup, but this one is the only clear one I had. So you can see when you compare these two, these two brews here, the one on the right, which is the Western style of brewing is much darker in color. The one on the left is um, the Gung Fucha style of brewing, which is much lighter in color, and that's just because of how the tea has steeped. So when we taste it, you're getting, um, it's interesting. I feel like I'm actually surprisingly, I'm getting more of the savory notes, I think, right off the bat. I'm actually not getting as much of the sweetness, which is something that I didn't really expect. I thought that I would actually get more of the sweetness with the initial brew in the Gung Fucha style and less of the savory because I feel like in the Western style that the savory is a little bit more of an after note. Um, so it's actually pretty interesting and I do wonder how this will change um, as we keep brewing. But that's what's so interesting about this brewing style is that you get to tea, you get to try the tea at its different time points. And so you're really getting to know the tea at all levels. It gives you a little bit better of an idea about maybe the character of the tea and it's um, how full bodied it is in nature because it's giving you like an opportunity to taste the tea as it's changing. So just something fun. I think that wraps up our first 10 minute tea chat. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. That was a lot of fun. I'm sorry we went a little bit over 10 minutes, um, but the goal with these tea chats is that I just want to give you access to my tea collection and to really affordable, good quality teas. Um, so I'll put in the comments below some more information about this tea and maybe like a couple of places where you could get it too, um, including where I bought mine from. The other thing I want to say is that if you're having fun watching these videos and joining along for the tea journey, please like, comment, and subscribe. Would love to hear from you guys and would love to see you guys following along. Um, the other place you can find me is on the Instagram. It's at travel through tea. Um, and I'm always around to answer any of your questions or tea related needs. Um, and we'll be back soon.